Welcome back to another episode of Dear Young Wife with the beautiful Tommy or to see Panda and myself, Chef Daniel Lurie. Guys, I want to tell you why Tommy looks so upset. Um, this is a bit of behind the scenes I'm letting you into. So, <laughs> so part of our topic for today is something a bit sad. Well, it's not actually sad. It's actually it's actually a um, a joke of something that happened, and um, Tommy's very upset about it because she doesn't like sad topics of dear young wife. She likes to talk about all the girly and happy stuff, but you know this is reality, so we need to face it. Thank you so much for coming back. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. And if you haven't followed us on Instagram, please do follow us as well. It's at Dear Young Wife. So I'm going to read this quickly. It's actually a joke of a, it's called the best divorce letter ever. And Tommy's upset about the word divorce because... No, does... I'll just, just read your thing now. Read it. Um, okay, so it says, Dear Wife, I'm writing you this letter to tell you that I'm leaving you forever. I've been a good man to you for seven years and have nothing to show for it. This last two weeks have been hell. Your boss called to tell me that you quit your job today and that was the last straw. Last week you came home and you didn't even notice I had a new haircut. I had cooked your favorite meal and even wore a brand new pair of silk boxes. You ate your food in two minutes and went straight to sleep after watching all your, all your TV shows. You don't tell me you love me anymore. You don't want sex or anything that connects us as husband and wife. Either you're cheating on me or you don't love me anymore. Whatever the case, I'm gone. Your ex-husband. P.S. Don't try to find me. Your sister and I are moving away to West Virginia together. Have a great life. So the wife responds and says, Dear ex-husband, nothing has made my day more than receiving your letter. It's true. You and I have married... You and I have been married for seven years, although a good man is far, is a far cry from what you've been. I watch my series so much because they drown out your constant whining and gripping too bad that doesn't work. I did notice when you got your haircut last week, but the first thing that came to my mind was you look like a girl. Since my mother raised me not to say anything, if you can't say something nice, I didn't comment. And when you cooked my favorite meal, you must have gotten me confused with my sister because I stopped eating pork seven years ago. About those silk new, silk new boxes, I turned away because the $49.99 price tag was still on them. I prayed it was a coincidence that my sister had just borrowed $50 from me that morning. After all of this, I still loved you and felt we could work it out. So when I hit the lotto, the lottery for $10 million, I quit my job and bought us two tickets to Jamaica. But when I got home, you were gone. Everything happens for a reason, I guess. And I hope you are fulfilling life, the life you've always wanted. My lawyer said that the letter you wrote me ensures that you won't get a dime from me. So take care. Signed, your ex-wife, rich as hell and free. P.S. I don't know if I ever told you this, but my sister Carla was born Carl. I hope that's not a problem. <laughs> Sorry, that was an interesting one. It's actually a joke. So yeah, this it's thing's a dry joke. is a <laughs> actually your dry joke is making me laugh. Yeah. So Elsie, yay, looks sad. Oh no, I'm not even gonna pet you. So back to today's topic. Today's topic is all about mm, talk now. What's this topic about? This topic is all about. Go on, tell us. <laughs> Divorce. Yeah, I literally forgot. <laughs> you forgot. Okay, so today's topic is about. Okay, so this is a bit of a continuation from last week, and um, there's a there's, there's a topics that make Tommy sad. So. But it's okay. Let's just let's get the opinion of so people. So yeah, our topic today is too tired to cook. Too tired to cook. Are you always too tired to cook? Sometimes I'm too tired to cook. So what do you do? What does your husband eat? Um, you know when you're too tired to cook, I have this thing in the freezer. We put it in the microwave and you, you just warm it up. Microwave. Okay. Yeah. So, but then it's not always like the best. It's when when you are too tired to cook. That's when he now says, um, you know, I feel like eating. 
that <laughs> sauce that you made three and weeks I'm ago. Like, no! have actually been contacting us saying that the wives are cooking hmm. bitterly hmm. and we went and a lot of brides are like we'll go to work too it's not like we are the only yeah. one that goes to work we go to work too we do this we do that we do this, we do that we now come back tired and by the way we spend the whole weekend weekend cooking stocking the freezer and you yeah. don't want to eat any of the food in the freezer you want to eat something yeah. What is brand new? <laughs> I mean, you know, part of part of why why I always um, you know work with a lot of um, young married women and even the older married women as well is you know we always find a way to create quick meals, quick recipes that don't take that long. You know, so coming back from work from a long day, traffic and work <sighs> and children for those who have kids. You know, the last thing you want to do is to spend another you know two three hours in the kitchen and some husbands and some fathers don't like the maid or the nanny or the cook to make the food yeah they can help and prepare but they like the wives or the mothers of the children to make the food and it has to be from them from their hands you know you know we spoke about the whole um, kitchen being a sacred place in one of our first episodes of dear and wife and you know we we'll go back to it today and you know it's important for women to know how to create quick meals that are still healthy that are still nutritional that are still wholesome for the whole family to enjoy and you know when you talk about African cuisine, you talk about food that you know takes a long time to cook. And talk about the Nigerian soups, this thing sometimes take a long time to cook. But once you have your bases prepared, so you know if you're gonna make maybe a gusi, that kind of thing, you know you could have done the base of the of the gusi stew already. Mm. You could have you know done the the blending of the tomato and cooked it down. Do you put tomato in a gusi? No, you know some people they do a, a blend of 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 the sauce, so it's like stew. So they would do the tomato, onion, um, tatashi, atarudo, blend it, cook it down, and they would fry it with palm oil. So that would be. Well, a I want thick, to ask. Yeah. I I heard that you you shouldn't put tomato in your gusu. I mean, some most people don't, but some Why? people do. I mean, it's just that thing of having the the freshness of the taste. Because you know, sometimes tomato goes bad quite fast. Oh. So and it changes the consistency of the stew. So especially like when you're doing a foru or something, it's just atarudo. That's actually sometimes not even that you just add an onion, onion and you know so it gives it it makes it it gives fresh. it that flavor that freshness and you know so it's just making things half ready in the freezer if you have good electricity good power you know you have all your bases of every sauce ready you mm. know for something like f4 now it doesn't take that long to cook at all so you know just chop your onions chop your atarodo you um you have your meats cooked already in the freezer so whatever meat you want to have, you could do chicken, you can do beef, shaki, one more, you know, different things. Just have it in the freezer. So you come home, you take out, or before you get home, you told the maid or the nanny to take out but what you want to use. And if you don't have it, I mean, and what you... just come, she's like just coming home and then he says, oh, I want to eat something different. Four and something. Yeah, I mean, and you don't have that stuff in your. Food. I mean, on the way home, the no. But on the way home, I mean, he doesn't know. You just okay, get home. I mean, you probably would go to the market at ten pm to go for a four because I don't think the market will even be open. I mean, some might be depending on the area you live in. But you know, if one make a gusi, you'd have your gusi in the storeroom already. Mm. You have your base for the sauce in the freezer. You have your meats cooked and fried in the freezer. So. You take it home, you pop it out, 10 minutes, it's, it's um, defrosted, it's thawed, put your gas on, throw everything in, mix it. It's not when you want to make it for, you now start, or when you make a gusi, you now start thinking, you need to go and blend pepper, you need to go and do this. No, you, you have prepared all these things halfway well, wait, down the well, Why don't you have to manage this thing? Most of, most of, like, for instance, I'm coming, I'm tired. I have to now cook. I, mean, I don't want to cook because I have some things in the fridge I'm going to put in there. Yep. You know, why don't the guy mm. understand? Like, why don't guys understand this? I mean, it's, all, it's always a personal relationship with you and your husband. I'm, I can't comment on things like that because, you know, before you married him, you knew that he likes to eat fresh food. It's not. No, that. what if he doesn't like to eat? He, 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 he always had this thing. Do you understand? You always stock your fridge and he's always eating it. But what this day, you, you come, you guys are tired, yeah. like, and then he says, This is what I want. And then he's so hard on it. And you know the way you guys can be. Yeah, but if, if you know that it's not, he it doesn't do it all the time, then this is just an exception. Then obviously, you know, permit him to have his moment. You know, there might be some days that you 
just come out of the blue and say you want something and he has to do it as well it's all about compromise but you know just learning how to do quick recipes so what actually we, i think we should do is yes. um we're going to do a little challenge yeah. for all our viewers yeah, all our yeah. subscribers all oh, our no, followers everybody. and you know i'm gonna we're gonna put out a recipe on on our instagram page that's the best way to do it and i want you guys to follow the recipe cook it and send in the pictures of your finished product and yes. for the ones for the day on whites who are married you know you could send us a picture of you and your husband enjoying it or you know anything picture reference of the finished meal with or without your husband or husbands if you're the ones doing it with or without your wife as well that'll be good yeah so send it in to us let us know how it went let us know what challenges you faced or how enjoyable it was and i think we will definitely pick a winner and we'll be gifting something nice to the winner so once we announce the winner we'll let you know what the price is and it's going to be a big surprise so make sure you do check that out on instagram yes. as well but yeah um for, i mean for me food is food is food is vital food is a way of it's a communal communal language that we all speak food is a way of bringing people together people of different backgrounds beliefs creeds orientations you know whether you're muslim or you're christian or you're from or you're hindu or eight like whatever it is you know it's bringing people together and i believe that every every household should have the right to eat in good food eating healthy nutritional food i mean what do you consider as good food it's not really a meal that consists of all the different types of meat and seafood inside it's just something that's enjoyable that's fresh that's clean that's healthy so you know a lot of the work i do as well falls along the lines of you know um any food poverty which is eradicating food poverty which is not just the act of being hungry it's also having the right knowledge and you know not having the right knowledge and not having the right exposure or, or understanding food and its agricultural sources but yeah that's it really um for this episode of day on why do follow us on instagram and on youtube if you haven't done so to all our new subscribers we say a big thank you thank you so much merci beaucoup um eshe um i don't know any other <laughs> i can't think of any other dalu dalu um 